Hello and welcome to the Adobe Premiere course. In this course you will learn how to work with the software. You will learn all the basics like setting the videos and editing them, like cutting, merging and adding effects to video clips to make a professional video. Plus how to fast forward and make slow motion videos and a lot more, like adding transition effects and text to the video. You will learn how to edit the transition effects and how to edit the text. We will start from the text size and we will go all the way to how you can animate the text. And also you will learn how to edit audio files and merge them with videos and images to extract the final version of a video. That's not all, I will also give you a free list of websites that through it you can get cool and professional clips to use in your own videos. So if you want to learn how to edit and create videos with the Adobe Premiere software, all you have to do is subscribe to this course. Hello guys and welcome to this video. In this video I will show you how to get images to use them in your projects. Same as the last video, I will show you free websites and paid ones. So we start with the free ones. The first website is called freepick.com. It's a famous website and it has so many images that you can use in Adobe Premiere and in a lot of other softwares like Photoshop, etc. We have the search box here, so all you have to do is type the images topic and you will get a lot of results. We have vectors, icons, and photos. So you check the photos box to get only results for photos. Here we are. Most of the images here are for free, but you will find a few paid ones. And they have this symbol on them. So this symbol means that you need to buy this image. But most of the images are for free. You click on the image, then you click on free download to download the image. We wait a little bit and the download starts. So you type the topic in the search box and you will get a lot of results. You select the image, then you click free download to download it. As you see here, we have more than 300 images to choose from. So that's it for this website. The second website is called Pixabay, and you saw this website in the videos lesson. And that is because this website offers both videos and images, so all you have to do is to choose images from here. And you type your topic in the search box. And here we are. You click on the image. You click free download, then you choose the size. And click download. Check the I am not a robot box, then download again. And here we are. And if you want, you can donate to the website because they truly give us images for free. And it, if it wasn't for them, we would have to pay a lot of money to get these photos. And these are some very, very great photos. Now we move to the next website. It's called Unsplash. Same thing, we have the search box. You type your topic in it and you get a lot of results. For example, we will look for nature. And you choose the photos you like and you can download them. And to do that, you just click on the image and select on download free. The next website is Big Jumbo. We have the categories right in here you can choose from them whatever category you like for example we'll go for technology
then you click on the image then you click on free download we have the categories menu and the search box over there so take your pick you are familiar with the next website because we mentioned it in the videos lesson and again like the other side it has both images and videos but the link for images is different now we have the link for videos and of course we have the search box and some categories in here you search for what you want and you will get a lot of results click on the image then click on free download one more thing there is a huge difference between free videos and paid ones because the paid ones are much more better than the free ones and they are taken in a very professional manner so I recommend the paid ones if you have if you do have the money but that is not the case for images because I have been downloading images for a long time and I can tell you that there are, isn't there isn't much of a difference between the free and the paid images they are almost the same so I recommend that you save your money and go for the free ones since they are almost the same if you have the money download premium videos but if you don't it's okay download the free ones but for the images I always recommend to download just the free ones because they are the same as the premium ones there is no not much of a difference with that being said we move to the paid website the first website is photodune.net it's for Envato Market you search for the topic you like we have here the, the categories and as you see we have a lot of images to choose from each image ha has its own price we have here five dollars nine ten nine again you choose the image then you buy it the next website is Shutterstock this website also has both images and videos this is a huge website with more than 225 million items to download and the same thing you type what you're looking for in the search box Here we are you choose the image and you pay for it the next website is creative market you select photos then you choose from this menu right here for example we have your education you choose the topic, you get the image, and you click on the one you liked, and you buy it. Then you pay for the image from here. For example, this image is costs 14 bucks. The other website is iStock. It has both images and, and videos. So you choose photos, and you type your topic in the search box and you choose the photo you like and you buy it same as every other website the last website is called alami.com it has more than 145 million items to download you type your topic in the search box For example, we search for editing movie. This is just an example. And you get a lot of results. Then you choose your image and you buy it.
So these are all of the websites. I will include a document containing all of the, these sites so that you can take a look at all of them. They are divided to types, free and paid. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello guys and welcome to the Adobe Premiere course. In this video, I will show you where from and how to get videos to use in Adobe Premiere. There are two types of videos, the premium and the free ones. So we will start with the free ones. The first website to get free videos from is this one, videos.pixels.com. This website contains a lot of videos that you can use in your projects. And you can download any video from here. You have here popular searches and if you don't find what you look for you can use the search box for example we'll search for sports and here we are we have so many videos to choose from here you can select the video you like I click on the video that I want, we take a look at it, and we click on free download to download the video. This is the first website, now we move on to the second one, it's called pixabuy.com and it has over 1.5 million files in it. Same like the other site we have here, the videos. And we have the search box in here. For example, we will look for street. And as you see here, we have many results. You select the video, then you click here on free download to download the video. Now we move on to the third website. It's called vdz.com but first if you want to play the video all you have to do is to play it to see it now we move on to the third website it's called vdz.com same thing we have here many videos and we have the search box to search for specific topics for example we will look for laptop Those videos are just advertisement. These are the results. And in here we have this menu to help you get what you want. I mean, as you see here, we have related search so that you can get the result that you want. On to the next website. It's called videvo.net. In here we have the popular menu. You select the video and we download the video like this. So select the topic you like and then you get a lot of videos. We have here both free and paid for videos. As you see, we have here the free ones that have this free symbol on top of them and we have the paid on ones like this. Now to the last site, it's called Cover. It's pretty much the same. We have this menu and we have the search box up here. You click to see the video, then you download it from here. So this is a bunch of the best free websites to get videos from and to use them in your project. Now that's it for the free websites, now we move to the premium ones. The first one is videohive.net 
This website belongs to Envato Markets. As you see here, we have more than 700,000 video effects. You have this menu right here to choose from. Or you can use the search box. In here you get the video and its price. For example, this one is for $20, this one $29, $13, $23, $6, etc. You click on the video to buy it. You can buy it now or add it to the cart and buy it later. You can also download a preview of the file. Now we move to the second side. It's called Shutterstock. In here we have both images and videos. And this is the video section link. In here we have the videos. And up here we have the search box. For example, we will search for sports. And we have different qualities in here. We have HD, 4K, etc. You choose whatever quality you like. Another website is Adobe Stock.com. Stock.adobe.com. We have here all kinds of files. You can choose videos from here. Then you choose the topic you like and search for it. Another website is called iStockphoto.com. We go to videos, then we choose the topic we like and we select the video. The last website is called Pond5.com You can use the search box to look for the topic you like. Then you get the videos and the price of each one. All you have to do is search for the topic and you will get the results of the videos. So this is the whole websites, both the free and the paid ones. I will put a Word document which contains the whole websites and you will find it with the video files. As you see here we have free websites and the paid websites. So that would be all for this video, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello guys, welcome to this Adobe Premiere course. In this video I will show you how to open a new project. When we open the software we get this window, so we click on new project. Then we get this window right here and we name the project from here. You can name it whatever you like. and we select the project location from here. For me, I will create a folder in the desktop. I will call it Adobe Premiere, for example. Then we click select folder and here we are. Now all the projects will be saved in this location automatically. Then we click OK and we wait a little bit. And this is the software main interface. Now we go to File, then New, and we select Sequence. Shortcut is Ctrl plus N. Then you select the video quality from here. As you see, we have here so many qualities to choose from. For me, I will go with HDV 1080 pixels, so we click OK. 
and here we are the software is up and running that's it for this video thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one hello guys and welcome to this video in this video we will talk about the software interface we have multiple interfaces right here this interface is for editing colors this one is for the effects this one is for the audio files and this one is for the graphics so we have here many interfaces but the main one is the one for editing videos and you can edit any interface you choose as well for example you can edit the space like this same thing in here you can edit the timeline space, the files, windows, etc and you can relocate the windows like this you can put any window wherever you want you can reset the interface to its original look from here you click here then reset to save layout and here we are that would be all for this video thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one hello guys and welcome to this video in this video I will show you how to add files to the software so we go to our project and we create three folders one for each type of files videos images and audios right click new bin then I will call it videos now I create the second folder I will call it images and the third one will be for audios now we select the videos folder then right click and we select import since this is the videos folder I will only import videos I select the videos then I click open and here we are the files are imported now we go to the images folder we enter it and then right click and we import the images we need here they are now we do the same thing to the audio files here they are we click open and they are imported all the files have been added the audios the images and the videos I will adjust the space so you can take a good look here are all the files I can change the view of the files like this I can zoom in or out like this so this is how we add files to the software thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video hello guys and welcome to this video in the last video we talked about how to add files into the software and put them in organized folders like in here as you see we have two videos in the video folder and we have files in the image folder and the audio folder now I will show you how to add and organize files in the timeline I already showed you how to add files to the timeline but it won't do us any harm if we saw that again so all we do is we click on the file then drag it to the timeline so the video is already in the timeline the 
bottom tracks are for the audio files and the ones in the top are for the video and images. We put the video files in the top tracks and the audio files in the bottom tracks. As I said before, click on the file and drag it to add it to the timeline. You click play and here we are. Both the video and the image are there. We can control the timeline length from here. We click here and we can make the timeline look smaller or bigger, like this. I will leave it like this. Double click on the file track and I can change the file look like this. We change the preview of the files. The files look better like this. You can see what we have on the timeline. And double click again to return to the former look. You can apply this to all of the tracks. Double click to change the view or the look of the files. You can put the files wherever you like. All you have to do is click and drag the file and you can position it in whatever track you like. And you can also control its beginning time. For example, you can make it start at this time or whatever time you like. You have the time right here and you can put the track wherever you like. For example, I want it to start at this time, I put it right here. I want it to start from the beginning, I put it right here. You get the idea. Same thing applies to all types of files. I will add an audio file. I add it to the audio tracks, as I said, these are the bottom tracks. Double click to change its look. And I can position it wherever I want. I click play to run the files on the media player. Now if I wanted to delete any file, all I do is I select the file like this, then I click on delete from the keyboard, and here we are, the file is deleted. And I can delete multiple files by selecting all of them and clicking delete from the keyboard. And Ctrl Z to bring them back. Now if I want to add another track, all I do is right click and I select add track. And here we are, we have another track. As you see we had 3 at first, now we have 4. Now if I want to add another track, all I do is right click and I select add track. Here we have the 5th track. Whenever you need a new track, you right click and you select add track. And if you want to add multiple track at once, all you have to do is to right click, then you select add tracks, then you insert the track number you want to add and its location, and you click OK. For example, I will add 5 tracks at once, and here we are. Here are the 5 new tracks added. You can edit the track size from here. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video I will show you how to separate the audio from the video and how to combine them again. Now we will add a video to the timeline. Right click, we go to import, then we locate the file. Here it is, now we add it to the timeline. It's a video. Now to separate the audio from the video. Right click on the video. Then we go to unlink. And here we are, the video is on its own and so is the audio.
we click on each file and then we click on delete from the keyboard to delete it that is if we want to delete any of them and you can click Control Z from the keyboard to return it now to combine the audio and the video again It's very simple, all we do is that we select the both of them, we select both files, right click, and we select nest, and we name it whatever we want, then we click OK. And here we are, there, one file. right click we go to unlink to separate the audio from the video and right click we go to nest to combine them again so that would be all for this video thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video hello guys and welcome to this video in this video i will show you how to cut videos and how to merge videos together so first we add the videos to the timeline We have two videos. Now if we press play, only the upper video will show in the media player. So always remember to organize your timeline to make all of the videos appear in the media player. So I need to move this video to make them both appear like this. And here we are. As soon as the first video finishes, the second one begins. But if I put it right here, only the upper one will work. So always avoid putting videos on top of each other. Cutting a file it's the same way for any type, whether it's a video or audio or any other type. You select this tool and you put it wherever you want to split the video like this. I can split a single video multiple times. For example, I split this video to four little videos. And I can position them wherever I like. I can rearrange them as much as I like. Now I split the second video. Same tool and same way. And here we are we have multiple videos now we move to merging videos together I shuffle the timeline a little bit so all we do is we organize all of the video in one track we put them in the order we want and we make sure there are no spaces between each video I keep going like this until I make all the videos in one track and as you see all of the videos appear as one video in the media player Take a look. They look as a single video. So this is how we organize videos. And then we select all of the videos like this. And we right click and we select group. And we right click and we select group. To make all of the videos as one video. But that is not it. As you see, we still can't edit the video, so right click again, and we select nest, and give the video a name, or you can leave it like this, then we click OK, and now the videos are merged as one video, and I can edit on the video as much as I like. And here we are, this is the video, and it's without any audio and I can add an audio file to it if I like I go to the audio file folder 
I drag it and I put it right here and when I play the video also we play the audio So this is how we cut a video and how we merge multiple videos together and make them as one video. I hope that you liked what you saw. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello guys and welcome to this video. In this video we will talk about effects and files inside the timeline. We already talked about the files and how to edit and position them inside the timeline. But in this video we will get to talk about some new stuff. As you see we have this empty window right here. It's the effects control window, so I need to select a file so that I can edit it to the effects controls window. So I will select this file, it's an image, I click on it, and here we are. The effects controls window is activated. So through this window I can edit files. I click on the video for example, and here we are. If I don't select a file, this window will be empty. I click on the image and here we are. Now we move to talk about the edit window itself. The effects controls window. We will edit an image. From here I can edit the image position. And I can put it wherever I want. All you have to do is click in here and I drag. I drag either to the right or the left. You keep dragging until you get the position you want. So all you have to do is to click and drag. If I want to put it back, all I do is I drag again until I get the position I like. And you can click here to undo the changes that you just did to the image position. All you have to do is to click right here. Reset position. You have here the position and we have here the reset position button. So all we have to do is to click on it and here we are. And same here, you can change the position of the image. The only difference is in here you position the image vertically. While the former option, you do that horizontally. And you can type the numbers here yourself. If you know the exact settings, you want. Otherwise you just keep scrolling until you get the result you like and again you can undo what you did through the button on the side. As I said you can click and enter the numbers yourself. And again you can reset the parameters from here. Now we move on to the scale. From this option you can edit the image scale. Again, I can click and drag until I get the scale I want. I keep going until I get the position I want. All you have to do is put the mouse right here and click and drag right and left until you get what you want. And from here you can rotate the image. As you see, click and drag and the image will rotate. Now we move on to the anchor point. When I click on this option, I get this point in the center. And I can move it wherever I want. And when I move it, it serves as the center of the image. As you see, when I rotate the image, it rotates based on the center of the image. So for example, I will move it, I move the anchor point in here and I will rotate the image. And as you see, this is what happens. The point serves as the center of the image and I can move it wherever I, I want. If I put it right here, it will be the same thing. When I rotate the image, the point serves as the center or the anchor of the image. And if I put it right here, again, I rotate like this. So 
So this is what the anchor points option is for. Now if I want to undo all of these changes at once, not just every change on its own. As you see, each option, has, each option has its own undo button, but I want to undo all the changes in a single click. All I have to do is to go to the top line and click on the undo button right here. And here we are. I click the reset button in the motion line. Now we move to the opacity option. From here you can control transparency of the image. Again I click and I drag and as you see the image starts to disappear. I'll put the image over the video so that you can take a good look at this option. Now the image is over the video and as you can see the image looks like it's merged with the video and I can control its opacity from here. Take a look. When I click the image looks over the video. I can control the opacity from here. I can make the image fully clear or transparent. And if I put it right here, you can see that the image is still working. But if I made it at 100%, the video, we won't see the video. The video won't show because we have 100% in the opacity but when I decrease the opacity we can see the video from under the image so from here we can control the image opacity and make a cool effect on the video and as I said before you click here to undo all of the changes you did at once this is the reset button that would be all for this video thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one hello guys and welcome to this video in the former video we talked about the effects control window and how to edit files. And in this video we will talk about applying effects and other stuff. First I will add this video to the timeline. I drag the video to the track. Make sure that the effects controls is activated by going to windows and check the effects controls option. The shortcut is shift plus 5. Now I select the file to make the effects controls window work. And here we are. As you see when we select the file, the effects controls are set. We drag this window here to get some more space. To save this space right here. We don't need it. So now we have this video file. and I will apply an effect to this video. I activate this feature right here. The position option. And as you see, I get this point right here. And I position the video in here. We move the video like this. And now I will make the video appear in the whole screen again. I will return the video to its original position. So I go back to the same option and I position the video right here. We put it back where it was. And as you see here, we have this dot right here. We have a dot at the beginning and a dot in here. Now take a look at the video move by itself. Take another look. When I click on play, the video moves by its own.
Now I have this dot at the beginning of the video and I basically told the software that I want the video to be positioned in here. I want the video to be positioned in here at this time but when I arrive at this point I want the video to be positioned in here. So at the beginning the video will be dragged and at the fifth second the video will be centered. I will repeat the process so that you can understand better. I will remove the both, both of the dots and as we said we put the cursor at the beginning then I drag the video and I position it right here I will put it just right here that's it as the video gets to this position as when I click and drag and as soon as the, the video reaches the position I like, I release the mouse. But always make sure to activate this feature here to apply the filter. Now I drag the cursor and I put it right here. Or wherever you want to put it. For me, I will put it on the fifth second. So now I will tell the software that I want the video back to its original position when we get to this point. So I leave the cursor right here. Then I drag the video and I put it right here. And as I said, when the video reached the position I want, I release the mouse. and we get this dot right here now I move the cursor here and I click play and here we are the effect is applied take another look now I will delete these dots I select them then I click delete from the keyboard now I will deactivate this feature and I will activate the scale feature and now I get this dot right here in the beginning and I drag the cursor and I put it right here then I will edit the scale like this so when the video reaches this point the scale will look like this and when I click play as you see the scale of the video changes and when I put the dots closer the process becomes faster take a look and when I put it further away the process slows down now we make the same thing to the rotation effect We deactivate the scale and we activate the rotation. And as you see, I get this dot directly and I put another dot right here. Then I rotate the video. And here we are. And I can reverse the effect like this. I put the cursor here and I rotate the video back. I put the cursor right here and I will rotate the video back then I get this dot right here I will make the video like this and I click play and here we are the video rotates then goes back to its original state Now we move to the opacity feature. I deactivate the rotation and I activate the, the opacity. And as you see when I activate it, I guess I directly get this dot at the beginning and then I will control the opacity. So the opacity is zero at the beginning, but when I reach this point, I will make the rotation, sorry, the opacity, for example, for 100% then when I click play 
Here we are. You can see that the opacity increases. And I can edit the effects as much as I like. I would drag the dot right here to make the process a little bit faster. And here we are. And again, I can put the cursor right here. And I can edit the opacity back to 0%. And here we are. We click play. The opacity gets stronger, then it decreases with the video. I select the dots, then I click delete from the keyboard to delete all of them. So now we make a recap of what we did. First I activate the feature, then I get this dot straight away. Now I will remove this dot from here. And I want to start, let's say that I don't want to start the effect from the beginning. I want it to start from here. So I remove the dot. This is just to show you that I can start the effect wherever I like, not just from the beginning. So I start from here right now. And as you see, I edit the position. So now the effect starts from here. Then I go to this point the points where I want to change the change to happen and I set the change or the position of the video in this case. This is it, this is the position I want and when I click play, here we are. It starts until the first dot and it will end with the last one. I can make another change by going here and setting the dot right here and I choose to change it, I want to make, in this case, I hide the whole video. And when I click play, here we are. The video is moving, then it moves back until it disappears. Take another look. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I will show you how to apply transition effects on the videos. These are the videos we are working on. And we will add an effect to hide or cover the transition process between each video. So we go between each video to this red tape right here. Right click and select apply default transitions. So we take a look at the video and as you see there is an effect that facilitates the transition process. Here it is. Take a look when I remove it see the difference. Now I add it again like this and everything looks so smooth and you can add it between all the videos. You can edit the length of the effect like this you can drag it to extend its length. Now what if we want to change this effect? All you have to do is to go here to effects and if you don't have the effects option in here make sure to check the effects option from the windows menu right here. I go to this folder video transitions and I have here a lot of effects to choose from. As you see here, 3D motions, dissolve, etc. Slide, wipe, zoom, etc. 
Now I click on the effect and I drag it and I put it on top of the other effect to replace it. Like this. And here we are. You can see the effect. The transition effect is changed. We take a look at another effect. And here we are. As you see, there is a lot of effects in here. For example, this one. You take a look at all of them, then choose the one you like. And this is the default effect, the one with the blue symbol. Cross dissolve. When I apply the default the default transition, this effect gets applied. So if I want to change the default effect, this one right here, right click, all you have to do is to select the effect, then right click and select set selected as default transition. And as you see, it has a blue symbol, which means it's the default effect. And if I click right here, I get the effect I just assigned right here. The default effect has that blue symbol on it. When I select an effect as the default one, it becomes blue like this one. As you see now, this is the default effect. Right click, apply default transitions, and here we are. So we have the effect on place. Right click and apply the default transition. And here we are. The effect has been applied. I return to the original default effect and I apply it like this. Right click, then we set selected default as default. And as you see here. Apply the default transition and here we are. Here it is in motion. You can see that the transition between the videos is smooth. So you select the effect you like, then right click and select set selected as default effect. Then you go between the videos to the red tape, then right click and select apply default transitions, and here we are. So that's how we add transition effects. Thanks for watching, and if there was any question feel free to contact me and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Hello guys and welcome to this video. In this video I will show you how to slow or fast forward videos. So first I will add a video to the software. This is the video I will choose. Then I drag it to the timeline. So this is the video in its normal speed. Now we move to fast forwarding the video. So to do that, all I do is right click on the video, then I select speed dur duration. The normal speed of the video is 100, so if I increase the numbers, so does the speed of the video. And if I decrease the numbers, the video will be slower. Now we will fast forward the video. So for example, I will put 150%. I click OK. And we play the video. And as you see, the video speed is increased. And the video is a little bit shortened on the timeline. So we click play to see the speed of the video. And as you see, the speed is increased. Now I will increase the video speed a little bit more, so right click, I go to speed duration, and instead of 150, I will put 300. As you see, the video is shorter in the timeline, and as you see, the speed is increased. Now I put it back at its original speed, right click, speed duration, and I put 100.
and here we are the video is at its normal speed now let's make the video slower and as you see we will put 80% in speed or I will put 60 and as you see it becomes taller in the timeline now I click play and you can see that the video is a little bit slower we return the video to its normal speed so we put 100 now I split the video like this I put the cursor right here and I use the razor tool to split the video and I will split the video one little one more time so the video is split into three parts and I will make the middle part slower than the other two so right click on the middle part then I go to speed duration and for example I will make 70% I click OK and take a look. I will make the process again. I split the video right here. And right here. Then right click speed duration and I'll make it 80% this time. I click OK and when I play the video you can see it doesn't work perfectly because the frames are not enough so if you want to work with slow motion make sure to use a camera with 60 frames per second to get everything right as you see there is slight movement between the second part and the third part it's going a little bit slower but then suddenly it becomes faster so make sure to use a camera with 60 frames per second to get everything right because the frames are responsible for the speed of the video you can see that the, between the second part and the third part a slight sudden change happens so this is how we change the video speed you can apply this on a whole video or a certain part of it One more thing to show you, and it's how to reverse the video. I'll make the video as one. Now as you see, the video is normal. We right click on the video, then we go to speed duration. Then we select reverse speed. I'll put it 100% again in here and as I said we click on reverse speed we click OK and you can take a look the video is reversed here we are you can apply this to the whole video or a certain part of it as well and you can remove the reverse effect by unchecking the reverse speed box right here. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Hello guys and welcome to this video. In this video we will talk about editing the audio. We have a video in here so we add an audio to the timeline. As you see here the audio is longer than the video. So what we do is that we go to this tool right here, the razor tool. Then we click here to split the audio and delete the part we don't need. 
and we have now the audio in the same duration with the video so now the audio fits the video now we will talk about increasing or reducing the volume so right click on the audio then we select audio gain So we increase the number of the decibel to increase the volume. And same way we decrease it to decrease the volume. For example, I will make it at. You can double click and click 10 directly. And now as you see, the audio track has changed. The audio has decreased, sorry, increased. Now to reduce the volume, we go to the same option. Now with the normal volume, the number here is zero. So I put 10 or any bigger number to increase the volume. And to reduce the volume, we need to put a number smaller than zero. So we basically put a, ne a negative number. So I put minus 10 as an example. You can see that I can decrease the volume like this or increase it. When I drag here, I increase, and when I when I drag right, I increase. When I drag left, I decrease. So as I said, I would put minus ten. And I can make changes to the volume using the same way. For example, I will put minus 5 right now. And here we go. So right click and select audio gain to edit the audio volume. And as I said, more than 0 means more volume. Lesser than 0 means lesser volume. Now we move to lower the volume for just a certain part of the audio. We won't be reducing the volume in the whole audio. In the whole audio. We will reduce the volume only in a certain parts. For example, we will say we will lower the volume at the end of the audio. So to do that, we put the cursor here. So that's when the audio volume starts decreasing. Then we click here, and as you see, we have a dot. First, we click on the audio, then we click right here. And as you see, we have a dot in the audio. Now we go to the end of the audio, and we do the same thing. We click on the keyframe, and we have another dot. Then I lower the keyframe like this. So now the volume will decrease as the video comes to its end. And you can pull the keyframe up to increase the volume instead of lowering it. Now I delete the keyframes. Now let's say that I want to lower the volume in the middle of the audio instead of the end. To do that, of course, I put the cursor right here. I click on the keyframe. I get the dot, then I go here and I do the same thing. I click on the keyframe to get the other dot. And this is the part we will, where the volume will be lowered. Then I lower the volume like this.
like this. I put a keyframe in there and I put another keyframe like this and the voice will be lowered. And as you see, when we reach this part, the volume will go away. And the volume goes back to its normal position after we pass the keyframe. Now I will remove all of the keyframes. And I can go here to, so to speed the volume. I go to speed duration. I will make it instead here for 131. Then I click OK and as you see the audio track is shortened. We speed the audio the same way we speed the video. I can make the volume slower too by going to the same option and I would reduce the space, the speed. 100% means it's normal speed and less than 100 means it's slower. Over 100 means, means that it, the speed is increased. For example, I will make 80% and now the volume is slow and the audio track is longer. Now I will put the volume to its original state which means I need to put 100 and the audio is back to its normal state so that's how we edit the video and the audio thanks for watching and see you in the next video hello guys and welcome to this video in this video we will talk about text and how to write text in the adobe premiere software so to start typing you go to the text tool and you set the time of the appearance of the text For example, I will set this time, then you start typing. For example, I will type my name, Joseph Adam. You can type whatever you want. Now I click play and the text will appear on the time I set it to do so. Here we are. If I want the text to start from the beginning, all I have to do is to pull the text to the beginning like this. And you can adjust the text duration from here. We drag to increase or to decrease the text duration. You can adjust the duration as much as you like. Now we will talk about editing the text. So we go to the graphic interface. Then I get these settings right here. I get the essential graphics and all of the settings. I click on edit. Then I click on the text and I get these settings right here. When we click on the text, we get these settings right here. For example, we use this option to position the text. As you see, we can center the text. Same thing here. We position the text on the top, we position it on the center or in the bottom. And here, we can put it on the right corner or the left corner. Now I will put it in the center like this. And from here you can edit the text position manually. You drag until you get the position you want. Then you release the mouse. From here you can edit text position vertically and horizontally. And from here you control the text size. I will leave the text like this. And I center it. And from here you control the text opacity. And from here you can rotate the text. The 
I'll put the text back to its original state. Now we move to these settings right here, the text settings. And from here you can select the text font. First you select the text, then you go here to set the font. You may not have this much fonts in your software, because these are the fonts I have in my computer, so you will only get the fonts you have on your computer. From here you select the text type, bold or regular, dependent on the fonts. Some of the fonts don't have the bold option. From here you control the text position as well. Start typing from the right, the left or the center. I will leave it in the middle. And you control the text from here again. You select the text and you set the settings as you like. We select the text like this. Then we control it from these settings. Choose whatever option or tool you like. And we have some more text settings in here. As you see, you can tilt the text. And there are many options in there. And when you finish your settings, you click play to take a look at the changes you just made. Now I go back to the editing interface. And I edit the space a little bit. It's better like this. I can position the text using this tool as well. I can drag it and put it wherever I want. I go to the timeline and I can put the text wherever I like. Depending on the where I want it or when I want it to start. And I can increase its duration like this, as I said before. So to edit the text, all you have to do is to select the graphics interface. And here you have the text settings that enables you to edit the text. You go to edit, then you click on the text, and you get all of these settings at the tip of your hand. One more thing I forgot to show you is that you can edit the text color from here. You click here and you choose the color you like. You click OK and the changes are applied. And from here you can add a frame to the text and edit the frame color. and you can increase the stroke from here you click here to deactivate the frame and from here you edit the shadow you can set the percentage to whatever number you like you can uncheck any option to remove it and you edit the color from here as we said before I put the text back to white and I can put the text wherever I like in the timeline. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Hello guys and welcome to this video. In the former video we talked about text and how to edit them. So in this video we will talk about how to move the text. So we start by selecting a file. Then we go to the effects control window. Now we get these options to edit the file. To get this window, make sure to check its box from here. We talked before about how to move images and videos. So today it's the same thing, only we will move the text instead. We make some space right here. 
So we start the video with the text in the middle. We activate the position feature from here. And we got this dot right here. Now we move the cursor to where we want to the text to disappear. For example, right here. And we go here and we hide the text like this. We click and we drag until the text disappears. And here we are. Now we click play and here we are. Now we bring the text back to the middle like this. We put the cursor right here. Then we drag the text back to the middle. And here we are, the text disappears and appears again. And we change the effect speed like this. As you see, the effect is a little bit faster right now. I'll remove these dots. Same thing for the text scale. I activate the scale feature. And as you see when I play the text, the text walks away. And I can make it look like this again. As you see when I click play, it goes away, then it will come back. Same thing for the opacity. Now I will delete the, dot, the dots, I deactivate the scale feature, then I activate the opacity feature. I will make the text disappear in this way. As you see when I click play, the text starts disappearing like this. And I will bring it back like this and make it 100% in here. As you see, the text disappears, then it comes back. So this is how we edit the text position, and the scale, and the opacity. You activate the feature, and you go to the time. You want the change to happen, then you make the change. And you click play to take a look at the change. Just don't move the text like this. Make sure to move the text from here. You click and you drag, like this. And when you click play, you can see the change apply. That's it for this video, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello guys and welcome to this video. This is the final video of this course and we will talk about exporting the project. I will show you how to save the project in a type that you can edit it later if you want and the second way is we export the project as a video and we have two ways to do that. We can export the video using the Adobe Premiere software or the media encoder. Using the open project button earlier, now we can save the project whenever we make a change to it. So we click save, we go to file and we click save to save the, change, the, the changes we just did. And of course we can find the project in the location we set earlier in the open project option. And for me it's right here in the desktop. So we save the project and if we want to come back to it and change it, all we do is we locate the project file and we open it. So this is how we export the project in a way that enables us to change it later. Now we move to exporting the project as a video that you can upload on any place you want. You can either export the full video or just a part of it. Now if we export the file right now it will be the whole video.
but if I want to export only a part of the video for example this part right here I set the cursor on the beginning of the part of the video that I want to export then right click and I select mark in now I put the cursor on the end of the part I want to export So this is the duration of the video I want to export. It's about 5 seconds. Now right click and I select mark out. So as you can see the part of the video is marked. Now to export this part of the video, I go to file, then I go to export, then I select media. Shortcut control plus M. Then we get this window and this is the video we will export. From here you can set the video format. We have so many formats in here. For me I will select this format. Now after setting the format, we click on export. We wait a little bit and here we are. I will go to the location, I set the desktop and here it is. We exported only the part we marked instead of the full video. And this is the file informations. We have the size and the format and everything. Now we talked about the first way of exporting, so we move to the second one. So we go to File, Export, Media, and after we set the format, we don't use Export. Instead of Export, I select Q. So I click on Q. In this way, we use the media encoder instead of the Adobe Premiere software to export the file. We wait a little bit, and here we are. This is our file. We can change its format from here. And this is the file location. For me, I set the desktop as the location. Now we click here to export the video. We wait a little bit. I have here two videos, so that's why we wait a little bit longer. And here we are. So this is the video we exported. So this is how we export part of videos in the Adobe Premiere software and the media encoder. And of course I can edit the exported video duration by dragging the marked space like this. And if I want to export the full video and not just part of it, all I have to do is to remove the marker like this. Right click and clear in and out and the marker is gone so then again I go to file export media and I set the file format then I choose either to export the file with the Adobe Premiere or the media encoder I can either click export or Q and I click export if I want to export the file using the Adobe Premiere software I will give the file a name, for example, new video. Then, as I said, I will click on export to export the file using the Adobe Premiere software. This will take a little bit longer because this video is longer than the other one. 
we have exported only a part of the video earlier but now we are exporting the full video so it will take a little bit longer and here we are this is the video as you can see we exported the full video so that's it for this video and it's the last video of this course I hope that it was useful to you and you liked what you saw in this course. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you in another one of my courses.